Hello artful friends, this is a video that I normally would post on my Smiling Void channel, but I kind of thought what's the point, because this channel is now my channel, and just my channel. It started as a group, I am very sad it is not a group anymore, but that is kind of something that I wanted to why I wanted to make this video. If you have seen on Tumblr, then you know that what I am dealing with in this year from what occurred last year to separate the group is I am finally actually getting help for myself. And it makes me really not like who I was, who KW was, who at all I was, period, before I started getting help and treatment. I would talk about, oh, I'm not a professional psychiatrist, I'm not a therapist, if you're having a problem, go get help, stuff like that. And I mean, I still believe that, but I was giving advice of what I wish I had heard rather than what I was necessarily doing. And so, now that I am getting help and whatnot, I am learning a whole lot about myself. I have grown and changed a whole lot, and I am thankful to know that there is more growing and changing that I can do. And so, if you know on Tumblr and whatnot, I was diagnosed with something that kind of, I was just like, I don't have that. Other people have that. I, I know about this. No, that's not what I have. I know what's going on. I've realized this isn't normal, but like, come on, I don't have that. Only to have it validated to me so many times that, no, you do. It is valid, and you're not evil or wrong that you have a certain thing, but I didn't want to just like have it as a excuse of, oh, I have a mental disorder, let me use this as an excuse to be a complete asshole. Didn't want to do stuff like that. And so I'm really working to correct and change myself to be the person that I actually want to be and not the person that I am. And definitely not the person that I was. I very much hate myself. I have never really liked myself, but especially after what all happened last year, like, I despise myself greatly. And so to finally be getting help to learning to like myself is weird. It's difficult. It is probably one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in my entire life. And to also be told that there's no cure is kind of that... It feels hopeless. And definitely knowing that even if I get cured and everything is great and dandy and I love myself, the people that I love are never going to come back. It can feel very ho hopeless, daunting, and worthless. But what I was doing wasn't working, obviously, and I'm gonna die one way or another, so I might as well give this a shot to see if it works before I die. Because that's inevitable, it's going to happen. But... I wish I had cherished things that I had more. And it's weird because there was one very specific moment, it was a very mundane moment. It was just kind of like, I'm heading off to work, I'm kissing somebody I love goodbye, and I just was hit with a rush of, hold on to this moment, cherish this moment, I need this moment. Please. And I was like, okay, well, cherish this moment, I, I am very thankful for having this moment. It's very sweet and awesome, and I have somebody with me who loves me. So, yes, I'll cherish this moment, and whenever that person completely left my life last year, 
all I remember was being like, I wish I could go back in the past and tell myself, cherish these moments. And I don't know if that means anything, but it hit me that it's a reason why I haven't deleted any of the videos on this channel. Because I don't want to take away from the fact that those good times happened. Those great memories, they happened. And those are the moments that actually need to be remembered way above any of the bad and depressing and sad are the good things that came out of having those moments with those people. And it still hurts. I can't... I did, after everything happened, I went back and was re-watching stuff and bawling my eyes out and stuff, and now I just can't do it. Like, I can't even see a picture I can't hear the name, I, it hurts, and I get scared also that I know things are getting worked out medication-wise, and just mentally working things out that maybe the bad things won't happen again, but I get really scared, like, what if they do? What if the bad things happen again? And I don't want that to happen. That's not what that person deserves, that's not what anybody deserves to deal with, and that's not what I deserve to deal with, and that is something that is actually a new revelation to me, is that I don't deserve that shit. It hurts. I, for all of my life, since very young childhood, believed that I deserved, we'll just call them my demons, I deserved my demons to ruin everything for me and tell me how much I deserved to have my life ruined. And how it was funny that I'm alone. A majority of my childhood, and definitely my teenage years, were spent alone. I only had one friend that I spent a lot of time with up until middle school. And then I was alone, and alone, and alone. And alone, and all I really did was sit on the computer, talk to some friends on the computer who I never got to meet in real life. It, it was just kind of how I lived my life, and of course, like some just stopped talking to me, and then some actually, like one of them, one of my internet friends actually killed himself. And I believed that I deserved to be completely alone. I truly did. I believed I was worthless, and any time that I would want to try to make friends and whatnot, it always seemed to end very badly in even the trying to start it. And so I was isolated, and I isolated myself as well, feeling that is what was correct to do. And then whenever I had made some friends, after already kind of losing my one and only friend in middle school, losing them completely, it hurt because then I had some friends and then they left as well, and I was again alone. And so then to have this group, the Artful Impersonator group, that was the first time I had a handful of friends. It was the first time I had ever really had a handful of friends in my entire life. And I was so thankful and that's why I was like, I have to highlight these people, I have to put them in the spotlight, they're amazing, they can put up with me, and they care about me, and they love me, and I want the world to see how amazing they are, and I want the world to love them as much as I love them. And then everything just fell apart because of me. 
and because my demons were never satisfied with the fact that I had people in my life. They constantly agitated the shit out of me. Every single time I had them around. Anytime I had them. It was a daunting, you don't deserve this. Why are you smiling? Don't you know what a horrible person you are? And this person doesn't actually love you. I bet they're doing this. If this person really loved you, they wouldn't have done that tiny thing. And there were times where I thought maybe they were right. And especially whenever they would say things like, Don't you know what a horrible person you are? You do not deserve to be treated nicely. Oh, they kissed you. You don't deserve to feel good. You don't deserve that. And proceed to tell me what a disgusting, horrible, awful person I am. And so it was very difficult to have anybody. And it had nothing to do with the people. At all. It had nothing to do with my friends. It had nothing to do with my partner. It all had to do with the fact of I'm very despised by my demons. They absolutely hate me. And they want to make sure I'm aware, always, that I am a piece of shit. And even like one of my friends, whenever their dog died, my demons just kept telling me like, oh, you should have done something. Oh, it's your fault. Oh, look, they're sad and you can't make them feel better. You're not a good friend. You you shouldn't be with them. They deserve better. And I tried not to believe it, but in all honesty, I believed it. I believed... I, I knew I didn't do it. I know that the dog wasn't at all in any way, shape, or form. It, I had nothing to do with the dog. But like that, I couldn't make them feel better. Nothing I could say or do would ever change anything. And, and that they deserved somebody better as a friend. I definitely, definitely believed that. And then to have constant in my head of, oh, your partner's hiding something from you. Don't you know that? They're hiding something from you. And being like, no, nah, we share everything, so I don't know why I'm getting this in my head. Like, it's not true. And then to have it just eat away and eat away because it was just constant. And finally, kind of like, okay, what the fuck is this? Like, why are you accusing that? Like, what is going on? And then, like, handling that very poorly because not having a clue why it was brought up so much, like, in my head. And the way I say handling things poorly was because I would push myself back and just be like, I can't handle it anymore. If that's true, then I can't handle this, and somebody else take over, please. And I very much hate myself for that. I very, very much despise myself for not being strong enough, for not being brave enough to stand up to myself. And shit just kept hitting the fan left and right. Because I couldn't take things anymore. Things that were never shown on the blogs really was also that I slept all the time. A lot of 
our weekly vlogs were my only waking moments. So those small portions that you got to see of our lives was pretty much my whole life. Um, that was all I was really doing. So I'd vlog about it, because I was awake. And that's no way to live. But it was easier for me, because when I was awake, I could not handle being forward, as my doctors would say, like, being forward in my own brain. I couldn't handle it. And so, sleeping was a way to escape, even though I would escape into nightmares and having awful dreams, but that, to me, I was like, nobody's actually getting hurt. So, it's better I'm asleep. And I'm not getting actually hurt. So it's better that I'm asleep. I couldn't handle life at all. I didn't want to live anymore. Even though, like, even saying that right now, I'm like, but you literally had every damn thing that you wanted. You actually had people who loved you, who were there in the moment, present with you. By your side, you had everything you'd ever dreamed of. Why didn't you want to live? And that's because I just, I could not handle being there. Like, I loved that I had that, but I couldn't handle what would go through me when I was with stuff that I loved. It's hard to even still, to this day, it is difficult to be with my pets, it is difficult to be with anything I love because it's torture in my head. It's wonderful, it's absolutely wonderful, I would never give up my pets for the world. Just like I didn't, like, I wouldn't give up my partner for the world, and, or my friends, and yet... Me not being able to stop and control my own brain and stay forward and present, I ended up, like, getting rid of, basically, like, getting rid of every fucking thing that I love. And I wish I could take that back. That is the biggest regret that I will have, even if I live to be a thousand. That is my biggest regret, is not being able to go fucking get help. To go actually find a way to control the uncontrollable parts of my brain. And keep everybody that I love. And, like, talking to my doctors and whatnot, like, they tell me it's not my fault. People go, people won't understand, and people can't handle people who are not like them. And nothing I could have done would have kept them in my life. Because... Like, I always use the metaphor of everybody has their own walk, walking path, like their own trail and whatnot. So my daughter here uses that as well. Like, your paths just forked. And sometimes people choose the different path than the one that you're choosing. And I was like, but is there any way that, like, that fork could meet back again? And they were like... That's never 100% guarantee. There's no map to life. Maybe. But more than likely, no. They're not going to be strong enough to handle it until they find it in themselves. And that may never actually happen. They're hurt. And they may want to just stay that way. And never give you a second chance. And you're going to have to live with 
not having that second chance, and learning how to move on, and move on the path that you're given. And that hurts a lot, but I am trying to stay positive about it, of... I definitely wholeheartedly hope that they are happier where they're at. I hope that they have a great future. I hope they get everything that they wanted because I didn't love them because, oh, I love you just because you're with me. I want the best for you just because you're with me. That was not, that's not love and that's not how I love. And so if them not being with me is what is absolutely best for them, then with my love, I really hope that they are happiest. And so, I have tried to come, up pe come to peace with that, but obviously in my head, like, I hear very often of just like, oh, well, they're probably miserable, and I hope they are, and how, it's stupid that they even dared, like, look at you, you're working so hard for nothing, you're, you're doing all of this to try to get better, and for what? And still, I don't have an answer for what. I really don't. The for what is not to get them back. Because if they don't want to come back, they don't want to come back. And I'm not going to be like, how dare you not want to come back. But I don't know for what. I don't know why I'm still going. I really don't. I don't know why I'm getting help right now. And the only closest answer that I can find is, well, nothing else is working. Nothing else has worked. I was self-harming. I was just sleeping. I was a lazy sack of shit. Who blamed too much stuff on the world and everything in it. Because I didn't want to own up to the fact that it was me who just could not handle the demons in my head. And so, I started to get help, and it's the hardest thing I've ever done, but it's, I hope, the most worthwhile thing I am doing. I really hope that my future self can, like, look back on me and be like, I am so thankful you actually did something to get help so that I can have the life that I now do and I love it and I am the happiest I've ever been and the happiest I ever will be. Like, thank you, past self, for getting help. Like, I really hope that that is the case. So that's why I'm doing it. I went to school. Even though I had sworn off school, I was like, I am not doing school ever again. High school was enough. I was homeschooled. So another part of being isolated. Because grade school, I went to public school. Something very, very traumatic happened. And thank God it wasn't more traumatic. Because the... A little bit of trauma that I went through was enough to fracture my brain to where I now have this mental disorder. <laughs> and it angers me and it pisses me off and it makes me... That's not fair it fucking happened to a kid. It's not. But it happened. And then in middle school, I went to public school for half a year. And the bullying got so bad. Like, absolutely horrible. I'm, it wasn't a trauma by any means. 
but the bullying was every day. I was, I had walking boots on, and I would be tripped in the hall, I would be tripped downstairs, I had my locker glued shut at one point, I was constantly trying to, we had half lockers, and people would try to like, hit my head in it, and like, slam me in it, and whatnot, and I never really understood why, I truly, even still to this day, I was super quiet, I was known all throughout my public school life as the quiet one. And something that still fucking haunts me to this day, every single time that people tell me I mumble or I'm too quiet or stuff like that is, I don't, I don't. wanna like somebody who traumatized me, the person who traumatized me had at one point because I tried to fucking fight back. Something that so haunts me is the words like, oh beware the quiet one. And it's because I was always quiet. I, I was known as the quiet kid. There had been rumors spread around the school about me, like, maybe I had a hit list or whatnot. And my sexuality was questioned, even in fucking grade school, which looking back now as a 25-year-old, I'm like, why the fuck did kids care about each other's sexualities? Like, what did it matter? But, I got homeschooled, and completely isolated myself. And, stupid decision, I know, but I isolated myself. And then made friends outside of the internet, and ended up getting traumatized twice because of that. And those were actual traumas. I would take the bullying every goddamn day, any day, to any of those events. Like, I seriously, like, the bullying sucked, and it was awful, and I don't wish it on anybody, but, like, I would take that over any of the things that traumatized me. And it made me kind of revert back in and not really want to let people in and not not try again because it only made demons in my head worsen to where it's super fucking loud up there and it fucking sucks and I have trouble staying forward. But then I was sitting on the couch of one of the people from this group, and they sat down on the couch, and was like, something is wrong. Like, what's going on? And I didn't want to fucking talk about it. I didn't want to open the wounds. They were still pretty fresh, actually, by that point. And... Finally, after a long time of us just kind of like sitting there and them being very just like, they were very concerned and I realized that they weren't going to judge me or treat me differently one way or another. And I finally explained like what had happened not that long ago. And that actually helped us to grow our friendship and then our relationship because I finally felt like somebody actually cares. Here's somebody who's not going to just betray me and hurt me like everybody else. They actually genuinely care about me and actually genuinely love me 
they're not going to do anything to hurt me. And I warned them many times that, like, I am not a good person. I am really messed up. I can't promise anything great and immaculate and wonderful from me. But I can promise that my love is extremely pure. It is extremely, like, true. And I don't love for nothing. Like, if I love you, I will do anything for you, and I will do my ultimate best. And I hate myself still to this day for making that promise, because obviously I couldn't hold true to it, and that fucking sucks, because I know for a fact in my heart that I meant it. And yet, when it came to dealing with myself and dealing with just like not really getting over anything definitely not having any fucking justice for any of the traumas and just kind of like trying to just bury them and get over them in my own way with self-harm and sleeping and this is dealing with them in my own way Obviously, I couldn't keep that promise. Like, obviously, I just, that promise was something I couldn't keep because if I could have kept it, then they would have never got hurt. The last thing on this planet that I ever wanted was for them to get hurt. And I still, to this day, the last thing I ever want is for them to get hurt, or feel hurt, or be hurt, or be upset. And obviously, I couldn't uphold that. Because I couldn't fucking face what was going on inside my head and allowing things to overcome me and just letting things win and then waking up and picking up the pieces. A way to describe it is whenever you're dreaming, and it feels so real, but you're not in control of your dream self-body, you're just kind of like going with the flow. I don't know if you've had dreams like that, but I have dreams like that a lot, and then that's just how I fucking live a lot, is you're not really in control, and sometimes you're not really sure how that happened, because you weren't in control, but now all of a sudden, like, stuff is happening, and you're trying to calculate, like, well, how did that even come about, and what did I do, and what did anybody else do, like, what is going on, and just kind of, like, trying to solve a puzzle really quick to react and have a response. That's what I deal with on a daily basis. And... Yet, that's so fucking normal to me that, like, now I'm trying to learn, like, here's what being forward means, here's what not being forward means, here's what, like, coming to means, and stuff, like, it's weird to me now, like, to think like that because I'm, that I'm not used to it. Like, I'm still kind of having a hard time seeing it as anything but normal. And I'll still catch myself, like, here's a good example of recently, like, my keys are still missing. I lost my car keys, and my house key, and my mailbox key, and I still can't find them. And one of those of being like, okay, where did I put them? And then wondering or who else could have taken them or like which animal and stuff and then now knowing that I have these things I have less people to blame other than inward of okay which one of you demons fucking did it where'd you put my keys where are they because it used to be 
that I would just kind of like, oh, my keys are missing, and I try to recount my steps, and I try to like look all over, and I try to just think, what would I do, and what did I do, and then if I couldn't come to a conclusion, then I would start to wonder, like, well, did somebody else do it? Like, did somebody take my keys? And if I get deep enough into questioning, like, from what my doctors can, like, evaluate and stuff is, like, if I get to questioning, like, if I start to wonder, like, okay, it wasn't me, or, like, maybe it wasn't me, like, maybe it was somebody else. If I get to question E, that's when I stop being forward. Sometimes. And so, then I deal with, like, having to pick up the pieces of an outlash. Or, like, lashing out, or just being snippy or cruel or anything and then having to quickly pick up the pieces and apologize even though it's really fucked up and I know like a lot of people would be like oh that's great you have an excuse and what a great thing to have because a lot of people lie and just be like oh I couldn't help it that I hurt you and treated you like shit because I blacked out it's a really great common thing to happen in courtrooms and whatnot of, oh, the blackout situation of, I didn't know I killed that person, I blacked out. What a great excuse. And that's kind of also why I didn't want to, like, have this diagnosis was because I was like, uh, yeah, no, like, hold me responsible for shit, like, I... No, and they were like, but it technically isn't you. How can we hold you responsible when we know it wasn't you? And me being like, no, kind of technically it is. Like, my head, my body's working. Like, technically it's me. It sucks. It, it pisses me off because I've always... Like, and still do. I hate the people who are just like, Oh, I blocked out. I couldn't help it that I hurt you so bad. You still hurt them. They're still hurt. Like, oh, your arm's broken? Well, I blacked out. You can't blame me. Like, oh, I, I didn't mean to break your arm. How do you know if the person's telling the truth unless they have a doctor, like, telling, like, the court and an actual doctor and not one of those doctors that they just pay off to get away with shit? How can you, like, it doesn't fix their arm. Their arm's still broken. So I hate the fact that, like, when I would come to, like, I would come forward and be like, oh my god, I'm sorry, like, I didn't mean to lash out at you, oh my god, I didn't mean, like, to say that, and, like, hear things that I said, that I'm like, okay, like, sometimes I can hear it, sometimes I can see it, but again, like, a dream where you're seeing things, and you're hearing things, and you're doing things that you have no control over, and sometimes that's not the case, sometimes it's completely, like, all of a sudden, your world just is, like, turned upside down and different from how you left it. And you're like, look it. Quickly, try to analyze what's going on and go with it. And, like, an instance in my life where I broke my parents' coffee table. Their glass coffee table. Fight. Flip a table. Rage flip a table. Not at all remembering I flipped the table. Not at all remembering why I flipped the table. Not at all, like... I'm not a violent person. And... Immediate coming to and being like... Oh my god. I don't do that. That's not me. What the fuck? And... It's weird. Like... They've never brought it up to me, but I'm sure it's really freaking weird. 
to have your kid reach flip a table, go away for a while, and hand you money and a big apology and freaking out of like, I broke your table. I, I legitimately broke your table. Oh my god, have my money, fix it. I'm so sorry. And you mean the world to me. I'm so sorry. Like, can we talk about a shit fest of who the fuck are you? And when I was a teenager, I had been diagnosed bipolar, only then to be told I am not bipolar. And that was a confusing, weird time, but that was before the rage flipping of the table and whatnot. And for the longest time, I couldn't really explain what was going on. Thankfully now, with like everything I have now, I can explain, finally, what the fuck had transpired inside my head and what exactly led to that and stuff. Is that an excuse? No. Does that make it okay? No. Doing any act of violence or anything like that, no excuse is good enough. And so I own up to it, and I try to fix it, but like I'm being taught now, is it's one thing to fix a coffee table, it is another thing to fix a person. So if you break a person's heart, or anything like that, you, that's a lot harder to fix than some glass on a coffee table. And you cannot fix that person at all. No amount of money, no amount of apologies, no amount of anything. You can't fix it. It's up to them now. It's on them to fix themselves or not. If they would rather stay broken and live with being broken by not giving second chances and holding it against them or saying I'm safer and better off without them or anything like that that you can't fix and that like okay I know we can't control other people that's a good thing we can't control other people but like okay I get that it hurts because I don't want them hurting I don't want them upset I wish like I could wave a magic wand and feel better and even if they never come back at least they fucking feel better <laughs> like that's all I want for them is for them to be okay for them to be happy for them not to have to hurt at any point because of me or even not because of me because work whatever I don't want them hurting but I can't do it I can't fix anything like I can only fix a coffee table and I can only fix myself. And so that was what I'm trying to do. Because not fixing myself wasn't working at all. So I still have a lot of pain. And from what I am figuring out and just dealing with, because. I do have those demons often interrupt my life a lot. And even like right now, I am writing a novel just because I need something creative to do that is fiction to just kind of. I'm doing a lot of real world crap. A lot of real world crap of therapy school and trying to find a job and. My car broke down, so having to get a new car, and like a lot of real world crap. That it's nice to escape that into writing a fantasy novel. And I cosplay still, that's a nice escape. But sometimes those demons still even want to interrupt those things. And sometimes it's for the better, and sometimes it's for the worse. And it upsets me to like have where I'll go through my novel the next morning or whatever and be like oh 
One of them decided to write some stuff that had nothing to do with the fucking book I am writing. Thanks. Or, some of them will add shit. Now I'm just like, I guess I can work with this, but really? Like, not at all what I wanted, but okay, thanks for your contribution. I'll work with it. But it is sad to know that some of them still are having a harder time with everything that had happened. A lot of them. A lot of them feel very, very betrayed. And a lot of them are handling them pretty badly. Handling being betrayed and abandoned, that's how they feel. That's not how I feel. Um, but a lot of them, they still feel that, and they, they're handling that horribly. And thank God I have help. And by me having help, like, that also includes them. And... I hope one day they can get to a point where they just realize, like, I know a lot of them are never going to ever stop the blame games. It's just kind of how they've always been. Like, it's either me to blame, or it's somebody else to blame. And they're never to blame. But, I hope one day that, like, at least some of them will wake up and be like, you know, they're not to blame. They didn't betray, abandon me, isolate me again. I'm gonna be okay. Life's gonna go on. New people are coming along. We'll do better next time. Something like that. I'm hoping that they'll get to that point. And for the ones who decide to be like, Oh no, fuck everybody. Fuck you. You deserve this. This is funny. I won a game that I never fucking asked to play. I won. I got rid of everybody. You deserve it. You deserve to be isolated. It's great you're alone. I'm gonna hurt other people that you start to love. Something that kills me is the fact that, like, and I don't know what happened. Like, I think that's what's killing me the most. Is hearing, like, oh, I hurt so-and-so. It was somebody who hadn't betrayed me. Like, why did I say betray me? Like, I've been using that too much. It is, it's not anybody that had left or anything. Like, nobody had, this person hadn't left. And to be told, like, Haha, <laughs> they're gone. Like, they're gone. You didn't need them anyway. They were this, that, and the other. And I'm glad they're gone and stuff. And I'm like, what the fuck? And like, I did it, and there's nothing you can do about it. That really fucking pisses me off. Because, yeah, now that person doesn't talk to me. And I have no fucking clue why. I'm not blaming them. I'm not mad at them. Like, if they don't want to talk to me, I don't care. Like, I don't know what happened. So if something really bad happened, like, from me and whatnot, and they now don't feel like they want to speak to me or see me or whatnot, okay. The most daunting part is not having a clue what happened. And I may never know, and okay, that is fine. Like, I'm coming to terms with, I don't always need to know the answer, because sometimes the answer will make me not okay, and then I'm, then I'm not okay, and then, like, my emotions are harder con to control, and then I'm not forward, and that is a bad thing. 
but it sucks to not know what is going on. And there have been a few instances, though, where, like, I've heard the same things about somebody else, and they won't talk to me for a little bit, and the worry kind of builds up of, like, okay, did they get hurt? Like, what's going on? And then they'll talk to me, like, a few weeks later or whatnot, and everything seems to be fine, so hearing all that shit, okay, maybe, maybe nothing happened, maybe it's all in just my fears of going through all this, maybe the, maybe I'm just overthinking, but it's one of those that I'm having, like, with my doctors, of them being, like, pretty, like, on top of, you don't need to, like, constantly seek reassurance of a relationship that you have with anybody, like, relationship as in any type of relationship, friendship, whatnot, you don't need reassurance for that, so don't constantly, like, if you get that worried feeling of, like, did I do something wrong, like, oh my god, yes, it's an honest thing to worry about, since it has obviously destroyed a lot of great relationships in my life, but I don't need to be messaging people of, like, are we good, is everything okay? Because I may actually just end up, like, maybe nothing actually happened, and they're like, the fuck, I was busy, sorry I didn't message you, you're so needy and clingy, or whatever. Like, I don't need to be doing that. I am valid in worrying, but that doesn't mean that I have to constantly act on my valid worries. But what I wanted to leave this on is just, if you, in this moment, feel like I have great people, I am thankful for what I have, big, small, whatever, like, if you're thankful for it, cherish it, treasure it. Even if you may never lose it, and I pray you never lose it. I really do. I hope on everything that you never lose it. But still cherish it, still be thankful for it, and hold on to it like you will lose it tomorrow. Even though I hope you don't, and I'm not saying that you will ever lose it, but like, hold on to it like you might. You might lose it tomorrow, hold on to it like that. I started to definitely do that with my pets, and stuff because- and my family, and even just recently having a death in my family, and- just being like, you know what, I need to cherish every moment that I have anybody that I love, or any pet that I love, and stuff. I need to hold on to it and cherish it. And I thought I was doing a good enough job with that, whenever that I had the group and whatnot, but I didn't. I, I wasn't good enough. Obviously, I wasn't good enough. And I wish I could take that back and hold on to it better, like, loving it better. Not, like, holding on to it if they better stay, but hold on to the fact that I, I have them and I'm thankful that I have them. And so hold on to what you have, cherish it, you need it in the future. Even if right now it seems so mundane and everyday and that's weird to think about. But hold on to it, cherish it, be thankful you have it. Nothing hurts to be thankful for what you have that you love. And know that even if it feels impossible and scary sometimes, that you're valid in your fears, you're valid in every emotion that you have, but know that if you come from a place of love, you're not wrong. I'm having to learn forgiveness, I'm having to learn letting go, and it's hard. It really is. Having to forgive people who traumatized you is actually not as hard as forgiving yourself. I'm finding that out. 
but I'm having to do it in a place of love, and I know that's not wrong. And I'm hoping one day I'll be able to forgive myself, and whenever I say myself, I mean myself with everybody else, myself included. <laughs> like, every way in my head, I hope I can forgive one day. And that's... It's not fair. It's really not, and I know that sounds childish, it's not fair, I shouldn't have to forgive somebody who traumatized me, I shouldn't have to forgive myself who hurt me so badly to take every single thing I love and throw it in the fire and then laugh about it. It's not fair, but it's the right thing to do for me. Learning to forgive that forgiveness doesn't mean that you forgive the act. Sometimes the act is the most unforgivable part and that doesn't have to be forgiven. And it's not necessarily forgiving of the person if the person has not changed and is not willing to change. But forgiving is for yourself. Like, you forgive another person for your own sake that you let go of the hurt you let go of them winning over your life because like I can't be hugged I can't be touched physical contact I still can't do and it is because they're still winning the person who traumatized me is still winning over my life. I'm valid in the fact that I can't handle it. Nobody's saying that that is horrible and wrong and you shouldn't feel that way. But I'm miserable because of it. It hurts a lot of things because of it. And it definitely hurts me. So I'm having to learn how to forgive so that I can then let go of the hurt and come to a place where maybe one day I won't have a horrible, horrible flashback or anything like that whenever somebody just even touches my arm. I'm doing it out of a place of love. I'm trying really hard. I definitely know that I'm trying, and I hope all of me one day will get to that point. But I hope that you know that you are stronger than you think. I've, I've had to find that out through myself, and I definitely do not feel strong, even still. But I definitely know I'm stronger than I think. You're still very valid, and you're still here for a reason. You've survived things. You've survived any- I don't know what you've survived, but you've survived. You're here. And there's a reason for that, because you are needed. And there's so much good still waiting for you. You will smile again. You have so much more to enjoy. You are here. You are wanted. You are needed. And no matter what, even if you feel at your absolute nobody cares about me, nobody loves me, please know that I do. If you ever want to drop me an email or a message on Tumblr or anything like that, I may not like instantly be able to get to it. Because unfortunately, I'm only one human with a lot of human inside of me. A lot of people in there. But I will get to it as soon as possible because I do care about you. You're not unheard. Definitely know that. You are not unheard. If you send it to me, you are heard. I care about you even if you don't speak. If 
you don't want to type me anything, I still care about you. I love you all. Thank you for being here. Bye.